things float. And other things. Devin? Devin? We observe floating and sinking almost every day. For example, imagine ice cubes bobbing in a cup of water or pennies falling to the bottom of a fountain. Whether something floats or sinks depends on the force of gravity and its density. Density is a property of all matter determined by the amount of mass in a given volume. Water, for example, typically has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter. We can observe sinking and floating by looking at objects in water. Usually, objects that float are less dense than water, and objects that sink are more dense than water. This wooden block will float because its density is 0.77 grams per cubic centimeter, which is less than the density of water. This rock, on the other hand, has a density of 2.4 grams per cubic centimeter. That's much greater than the density of water, so the rock will sink. An object's size does not help predict whether it will sink or float. For example, a large watermelon will float in water, but a small cherry will sink. We can also determine which liquids will float or sink. Corn syrup is denser than water, so it will sink. Oil is less dense, so it will float. We can also test different soft drinks. Notice that the can of regular cola sinks while the Diet Cola floats. The difference in sweetening content makes the regular cola denser than the diet drink. Some objects have a density similar or identical to that of water. These objects are said to be neutrally buoyant. This balloon is filled with water, so its density is essentially the same as the density of water. It's neutrally buoyant. Gases, like liquids, can provide a medium in which other objects float. A helium balloon, for example, floats because helium is less dense than the air around it. Gases are a unique form of matter because their volume changes readily in response to shifts in atmospheric pressure and temperature. Gases also help to keep boats, inner tubes, and life jackets afloat. The materials used in these products, things like dense plastics and metals, would sink on their own. But filling them with the gas, such as air, lowers their overall density so they can float. Shape also helps to determine whether an object will float or sink. When I drop this ball of clay into water, it sinks. But when I shape the same ball of clay into a boat, it floats. When you mold the solid ball into a hollow boat, air is added to the object. The air increases the volume of the clay without significantly changing its mass. This decreases the overall density of the clay, making it less dense than water. Density can also change as substances shift between phases of matter. In the change from liquids to solids, for example, molecules usually become more tightly packed and take up less space. That's why matter is usually most dense in its solid form. Ice is an exception. When water freezes, the molecules rearrange into a structure, known as a crystal lattice, which takes up more space. Water molecules in ice are further apart than those in the liquid form, meaning water actually becomes less dense as a solid. This is why huge icebergs float in the ocean. If ice were denser than water, fish and other aquatic life in cold regions would freeze or be struck by sinking ice. Instead, the layer of ice floating on a body of water protects the fish from cold weather. To recap, whether an object floats or sinks is based mostly on its density and Earth's gravity. Usually, an object that is more dense than water will sink in water, and an object less dense than water will float. Density is a property of all matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Solids usually are more dense than liquids, which are more dense than gases. Water is unusual because its solid phase is less dense than its liquid phase. Hollow solids, like boats, can often float because the presence of air lowers their overall density. So, so now, now you know. know.